welcome to another week of Wrexham. <laughs> <laughs> and Rexham, everything yeah. about it. No, 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 mate. No, we're going to go right into it because we got a really good episode. So, welcome to Two Beards, a podcast from Rex and Rex and AFC. Uh, I better do that. Get that out of the way. <laughs> and uh, mate, we've we've just uh, we've had a hell of a week. It's been a good week. And um, mate, how have you been? I've been good, mate. I've been good. It's um, look, I said it last week, and I'll say it again. I'm just itching for this season to start, but you know, it's nice to see you know the information coming in. You know, universities, uh, the university end is being renamed to the Stoke Cold Brew Govy end, and and all this lovely information coming oh. through. But to be honest, it's not tiding me over just yet. I just need football. I just need that back. <laughs> I, I I feel your pain. The Wrexham withdrawals are very much real. I know I've only got like a couple of weeks left though till the um, the American preseason tour starts. Pretty keen for that. I'm really, really looking in forward to that. But more so, I think I'm looking forward to our two guests today. What do you think, Adrian? Mate, I'm I'm ecstatic. I'm ex- so excited to to interview um, Sean and Ryan, who you will get to know and. I like to think we we will get to know a bit further. So I'm I'm just excited. That's yes. all I'll say. Yes, we love doing this. So so listeners, viewers, if you're on YouTube, we have partnered this week with me, the right wife, and Wrexham AFC. Um, Ryan and Sean, they are amazing people, and um, we had now have a special segment for you. So with that, sit back, relax, crack a cold one. And uh, enjoy the show, guys. Let's fucking go. <laughs> well, we've got a treat for you guys today. And uh, let me be the first to to welcome our guests. Some say, that's right, some say that the movie Mr. and Mrs. Smith was actually based on their real life. And that Bonnie and Clyde, well, they are the modern day version just with less bullets and more football. Winner of multiple podcast awards, including a Golden Globe and an Oscar. Let me introduce you guys to me, the wife, and Wrexham AFC people. Wait, raise a glass. (laughs) How are you doing? (laughs) There it is. (laughs) Uh, That that is, I'm going to say this now, that is the best introduction I've had to anything in my life. <laughs> I told him it was good. He was sitting there and he's like, you sure are they going to, you sure they'll like it? I'm like, mate, it's great. Like <laughs> You've got this. So well done, Chris. And um, thank you. Thank you, Ryan and Sean for being here. Like it's, it's actually an absolute privilege um, to have you on. Um, we obviously, for those who, I mean, for those who live under a rock, let's be honest, these people are the, the pinnacle of Wrexham podcasts, me, the wife, Wrexham AFC. Um, you guys were the first podcast both Chris and I listened to. Um, you know, we we came across, you know, Wrexham and we wanted to get around the content. And um, man, you guys just, you dro- drove it home for us how much it means to not just, you know, the international fans, but the, obviously just the, the local opinion. And um, so thank you for introducing us. And uh, how are you? How do you feel about it all? What's what's your been reaction been to, you know, this reception from all these weird and wonderful places on the planet? It's been it's been amazing to be honest. We've we've really loved it. When we started it, Sha- it was Sean's idea. She said, "Let's start a podcast," and I was, you know, and it was like, "Yeah, okay, you know, let's give it a go. See, let's, let's see how let's it keep works. the wife happy." Yeah, yeah. You, know, <laughs> let's do it, you know, let's give it a go. And it was, and we, it was always a case of if we can reach, you know, one or two hundred people in and around Wrexham. What you know, so we can talk about Wrexham. That would be happy, you know. And and if we enjoyed it and it was fun, and you know, we had a little bit of interaction with people. You know, we didn't want to be famous. We didn't want. Yeah, we did. <laughs> but, you know, I, I it was just something to do that was fun. You know, because we didn't, we don't. As a married couple, I'll be honest. We have very little interests that are similar. You know, we don't like the same music. I like to watch films. 
Sean isn't a big film fan. Sean's more of a TV pro. We don't have a lot of things similar. Why we're together? I've got no idea. <laughs> but, I was like, oh no, this is marriage counselling. We'll call this we'll call this a marriage counselling episode, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a case of doing something together, you know, that we both, you know, that we both wanted to do. And it was we never believed for a second it was going to 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 go around the world. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it is amazing. And then we, we started getting quite a few Americans, which we thought, OK, yeah, we get that. The whole, you know, documentary thing. And it's big in America and Rob and Ryan. We get that. And then we started getting people from Australia and New Zealand. And then we we're like, OK, yeah, we get that as well. And then we would get people listening in uh, Cameroon and Burundi and Singapore and then Iran, Iraq. <laughs> and then it was like, OK, this is not what we expected. And then we had Russia, uh, Estonia, and then it was like Argentina. And then all of these countries started popping up. And then it was it was it sort of blew our mind really we were just we were like we never ever expected all of these different countries to sort of come on board really listen to our little podcast our little podcast oh. Love I know, that. <laughs> love that. That that little podcast has won a lot of awards, mind you. So I don't think it's very little anymore. <laughs> yes, yes. That, that, that yeah, is, uh, yeah. I know. We're, yeah, we 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 were obviously up for the um, uh, national non-league football podcast of the year, and then we were like, Ed Sharm was really excited, weren't you? And then it was like, okay, I'm excited too, but we're not going to win it. So don't worry, you know, don't get too excited. And then we were up for best YouTuber under 10K. under 10K subs. And I was like, oh, we got might have a chance of winning that. And then I saw who was in the category and I was like, we're not winning that either. So, you know, it's, <laughs> it was like, it was really nice to be nominated. And 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 it was like, yeah, we, we'll win that. And then when we won the YouTuber one, like Sean screamed and it was like wow I was going to say I wet myself a little bit <laughs> <laughs> good that's yeah, how the reaction then, should be that's how it should be <laughs> yeah. yeah and then and then we were like oh wow we what I was like that and then Sean was like the podcast one's coming up and I was like I, I, even then I was like even though we'd won one I was like we're not winning the, the, the oh. podcast one there was like yours mine away the Mark Howard podcast there was um, Rob Ryan Red, who was obviously huge Wrexham podcast. There was Fearless in Devotion in there. And there was like, there was a few big podcasts. And I was like, we're not winning this. And then when we won that one as well, it that one meant more to me because that was one that the YouTube one, I thought maybe the podcast one, I was like, definitely not. We're not getting anywhere near that. Yeah. And then we won it, but we won it with, double the votes more than double the votes of the people who finished in second as well wow. and to win it by that much was just like i i was just speechless at that point and i was like i was like maybe we are quite good at this maybe we're doing all right <laughs> maybe you should keep going that's it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i love that so oh. much how how did you guys how did you guys actually meet like how did this love story start well it was 2010 <laughs> it was 2010 yeah it was 2010 we worked together in the same company um i hated ryan oh thought good yeah 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 thought he was lazy scruffy just like no i'm i'm too much of a princess to be with you sorry darling um <laughs> and then and then i'm not even sure what happened he gave me this god awful uh chat up line yeah um which didn't do much for me to be fair well, do we know the line do we know the then, line <laughs> yeah and then we do you want to hear the line yeah I, yeah if you're okay with it you know <laughs> and the ride's like ah no <laughs> yeah, i remember he had, he had a red shirt on it was horrible but he had a red shirt on um and he he just came up to me and he went we were at a party at this, a, a work party and he just said to me feel this his shirt <laughs> Obviously, people on podcast can't see me showing the shirt. <laughs> um, and I felt it, and he was like, what does that feel like? And I was like, no shirt. Not interested whatsoever. And he was like, boyfriend material. Oh, oh. wow, that is smooth operator. That's yeah. Yes. 
And then, yeah, I wish I had you let know that. I wish I'd let that line. She says all this crap, but this didn't work, right? She said it, <laughs> it didn't work. I wasn't that. interested, but she's married to me. So, there yeah, must you have won. Some <laughs> impact here. You know what I mean? I like a challenge. Like That's, a the challenge. That's the one. That's the one. Whatever. But yeah, so we met in work um, and we got together. Um, I think we started talking. Um, I mean, we knew each other, didn't we, for yeah. years because obviously we worked in the same company. But 2010, we started talking, and then yeah, I sort of fell head over heels with him. And then yeah, who wouldn't? The rest is history. You know what I mean? <laughs> our 13 year anniversary it. coming up, and our 10 year wedding anniversary coming up. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, so, so like when you guys first got together, like you, I imagine that. Ryan would be like, you can't see me on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, this is the thing. This is the thing. It was like you, because when it, when it all sort of first started, you sort of hide all your imperfections, don't you, in a relationship? Yeah. So you, don't, you hide the fact that, um, you know, it was like, for me, it was like the early game on a Saturday. So you got your 12 o'clock, 12.30 games. Smart. You watch that on the sky. And then you've got your 3 o'clock, obviously, you know. And then you've got your half five game. And then you've been drinking all day. So you just got, you just carry that on. So <laughs> it was, it, you hide that from any prospective girlfriend or wife, don't you? You don't sort of like, you know, you don't, you don't say that. You know, you, you you've got this uh, addiction to football and drinking all day on a Saturday. You don't mention that. That comes no. later. That, you know, <laughs> how, did, how, did you yeah. how did you mask it though? Yeah. How did you mask that? No, it, I you know I didn't really. It was it was sort of we got together roughly about the time of the 2010 World Cup, didn't we? Yes. And we used to, we, uh, Sean was drinking in a pub that was quite far away from my house. And I made it my mission to go, to go to the pub that she used to drink in to watch the World Cup games. Um, and then Sean would be like, oh, you, well, you've come all this way to watch the games. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's down the road. You know, it's not far, <laughs> e- even though I would probably have to drive past about 40 pubs to get to the one where she was <laughs> to watch the, to watch the World Cup games. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was, you know, and we used to watch the World Cup games together, didn't we, when it, when it all sort of first started yeah. for us. And then... So yeah, there was Sean always knew I was massively into football, to be fair. I didn't And I still married him anyway. Yeah, and she's yeah, still good job. Him. But <laughs> so, you know my Sean wife was... didn't say that. My, my wife literally <laughs> said my wife's like, if I had have known, I would have run very, very far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Sean Sean was never she, she was watching the, the World Cup games. It was be, just the thing to do, wasn't it? Because it was the World Cup, you yeah. know, and Wales went in it and you know. The, the pub she she was drinking in was sort of right on the border of England. I mean, literally, you could not get more on the border. So there was a lot of England fans there as well. And it was just an excuse to go to the pub, you know, because everyone was in the pub and it was always packed out and yeah. things like that. You know, but Sean was just it couldn't have been less interested in football. I mean, literally, there, there was n- if anything else came up, she would be more than happy to go and do that other than watch football. Yeah. Never been interested. No. 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 Still not now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not at all. Not it's at all. not like, no. Nah. <laughs> I'll tell you how much of a lie that is that she's just said, right? We watched a programme uh, last night on BT Sport. It was a, a review of the uh, 2022-23 Vanarama National League season. And Sean goes, oh, this is on. Shall we watch it? I said, yes. Um, By the end of it, Sean was crying. (laughs) So that is how much... That's awesome. From the girl (laughs) that I started to, to date 13 years ago, who would have rather go shopping than watch any sort of football game, to crying at a review of a season where Wrexham, you know, are obviously crown champions. That's that's her evolution as a as a Wrexham fan in a nutshell. As a football Love fan, that. do you um do you find that there there seems to be a very small sect of fans that have this like 
oh, if you weren't here in the hard days, you're not a true fan. I, I had an interaction with a guy online. <laughs> it was exactly the same as like, oh, if you weren't here, um, or if you weren't a fan of us pre-takeover, then you're just not a fan. And I'm like, well, that's just ridiculous for a start. You know, I could lead, I, and I turned around to him and said, well, if you weren't there on, what was it, um, October 22nd, 1864, when we versed Prince of Wales firefighters, then you're not a true fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. did, did, did you get any of that? Um, I, not per, not like directed at me, but then, I, you know, I saw things on Twitter saying, you know, like you just said, you know, if you weren't here at such and such, you're not a true fan. And I'm just like, you know, I've said all along, you know, people aren't born fans of clubs, are they? They're not. They, you know, they grew up and they, they make the decision, right. Okay. I want, I want to, I want to support, I know, Liverpool, whatever. Um, I, it's just happened later in life for me, you know. Yeah. I just, I, I, I'm a Wrexham girl. I've been, you know, I've, I've not followed Wrexham, but I've heard about Wrexham and all the, you know, being in the National League and blah blah blah. Um, so I, yeah, I just, I want to, you know, like you can swear on this podcast, can't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. fuck yeah, you can. Fuck, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> fuck all you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a supporter, whether I was, I've been a supporter for like uh, 20 odd years or two years. It doesn't matter. Everybody who supports Wrexham are welcome to support Wrexham. And you're all idiots if you think that, you know, the club doesn't need new fans. Because we need new fans. Who's going to fill up the cop when it's built? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If they build that. Yeah, here he is. He's he's like, we're both going to fill it up. Like, we're just both, (laughs) yeah. Two of us will be there. But like, you know what? You, You say that and it resonates with me because... My my mom was born in Scotland, um, and uh, so she's a big Celtic fan. And you know, coming over to Australia, football or soccer, as, as Aussies call it, we um, it's just not. It wasn't. It's just not here. And for her, it was hard because she's like, "Well, okay, well, what do I? How do I adopt what?" And my dad's a passionate Geelong fan, which is um, in Aussie rules football. Um, so I've got my my Wrexham tattoo, and then I've got my. Geelong tattoo on my other arm. So my two loves, right? And I hold this one dear because my mum wasn't born into it. My mum wasn't born into AFL in general, like as Aussie rules. And I really resonate with that because my club in the, and the Aussie rules now is, you know, has got this history of success and this beautiful thing. And, but that wouldn't happen if paying members weren't coming in or paying fans, people who are putting money into the club. That's what we're doing you're doing we're all doing and whether you come in now or you come in in 10 more years you know it doesn't matter so i oh, like i'm I, you know i love that you have that story because fuck them fuck them all like because that that's exactly how it should be and just be you know be as genuine as you want and if you love a club then you love a club and that's that's it absolutely it is, it, you know i went to my first game in 1989 right and then i got pictures of me on the pitch uh, in 1993, when when we when we got promoted, you know, and there's pictures of me and me little shorts and me Wrexham top when I was like 12 <laughs> or whatever. But you know, and uh, you know, you've got all that. And I've been to games over the years, and Shan has been a fan for a little over a year. Yeah, uh, but oh, two, years. two years. Well, well yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. sorry, but but what gives me the right? to say that her passion is any less than my passion because exactly. she's been following the club for less. It doesn't make sense. Do you know what I mean? There, there are, there are, you know, Shan's there week in, week out. We go to away games, you know. So, you know, you'll get people online who go, oh, where were you when we were playing Altrincham on Tuesday night in uh, 2009? And, you know, <laughs> when it was it's snowing and it was like, who cares where yeah. they were? But into you know who do, what does it matter you know and a lot of them sometimes are that the, the, some people that kick off because oh, I can't get tickets anymore because all of these new and it's like but that's that's good isn't it, it you know is great. that it's not good for <laughs> that person in particular because you can't get to watch a team that you love like but, season ticket but well they can't <laughs> but um, well, yeah, yeah but <laughs> that's the, right the, you know it it doesn't. That that's the way the club has evolved, you know, over the years. And, and you know, if you look at 
I remember I went to a game. Uh, I can't remember the year, but we were playing. We were in Division Two, and we were playing Man City in the league and at the race course. And um, uh, and look at City now, you know, and yeah. and City are getting forty odd thousand through the gate. He went, you know, it's it, it clubs just evolve. It's just the way it is. You know, this we played Brentford in the league, we've played Bournemouth in the league, we've played Luton in the league, you know, yeah, and, not long ago we were playing Luton. And you know, clubs just evolve and they pick up new fans. And I think a lot of fans are worried that, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, but it's it's bums on seats that generate the most revenue. Yeah, it is. But don't worry about that because we're selling every single seat that we have. So you're worrying about something that doesn't really matter at the moment. But, you know, because I saw one guy on Twitter who was having a little bit of a rant about American fans. And, um, you know, it's not something I'd really seen since the takeover, but I, I saw it. And he was going, you know, the most important thing is filling out the stadium for the next 10, 15, 20 years. You know, the mo- it's not about selling the most amount of shirts for the next five. And I was like, I don't understand that comment. I I, I, I get your point and what you're saying. It, it That is correct. It is. You know, it's not about selling tens of thousands of shirts for the next couple of years. It's about making sure that we keep fans in the stadium for the next 10, 15, 20 yeah, okay, mm. that is correct. But we're doing that at the moment. And we're doing that with people who are there week in, week out. And, you know, so I, I don't really get that feeling from people that, you know, that new fans aren't part of this club anymore. Because, mm. like Sean rightly said, you know, people aren't born being a fan of something. Then they're, they're just not. People will claim they were born being a fan of something, but they went. You don't have that consciousness when you're born. You know, it's your dad who supports somebody, or your uncle who supports, it, or your mum, or whoever, and then that bleeds into you as you grow up. And you can either choose to go, hell no, I'm not supporting the same club as my dad, my godson, like, yeah, or. <laughs> You can go, oh, yeah, I'm going to go along with that because that's what my yeah. family does. So people are never born into it. People are always, you. everyone's a new fan at some point. That's exactly. what I always say. Every, it doesn't matter if, it, it, you know, you might Amen. be, you might, <laughs> Amen. You, might be when you, Hallelujah. you might be a new fan when you're five <laughs> or you might be a new fan when you're 35. Everyone's been a new fan at some point. Yeah. You know, exactly. it's no point going to a 25-year-old you know, you talk to a 25-year-old who's gone to every single game since he was 18. And, you it, you know, it, it would be ridiculous to say, well, where were you when you were 15? You know, it's a ridiculous thing to yeah. say, oh, where were you when you were five? Where were you 30 years ago? Well, he wasn't even born. You know, it's it's such a ridiculous thing to they were, argue. They were, they, they were just jacking off in their mum's basement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, for me it's just it's ridiculous it's a ridiculous argument to have you know to, with people going well we both support the same club mm. what are we rowing about here we all, want, know, the same we all want the same club. thing well yeah exactly yeah. we all want success we all want it to be the biggest thing on the planet and, and for people and who are like what? i just wanted to stay little that's weird like and and, and you know yeah. what I, I'll, I'll say this to those fans out there that are of that mindset right? The club's goal is to go to the Premier League, right? A top-end player in the Premier League, like Declan Rice. <laughs> He's obsessed with him, guys. If you haven't realised, <laughs> he's got a real them. man crush on him. Sorry. So I just thought I'd bring up and rip the Band-Aid <laughs> off right now. Well, okay. So Declan Rice just sold for $210 million, right? $210 oh, no, Australian dollars. Do you think a club like Wrexham is going to afford a player like that Without new revenue, new fans, more shirts being sold, more exposure, more coverage, they've got to do everything they can to be able to afford to play with the big boys like that. And mm-hmm. you know, you've got to embrace it. The club's going to grow. It's going to change. It's going to get more popular. Yeah. More fans are going to come on, and yeah. that is a good thing. It should never ever be a bad thing. Right. And no. so. You want the Premier League, you want the top players, you got to pay for them, and that's the only way you're going to do it. So, And we are now starting a Patreon to get 
De- Declan Rice to Wrexham. So if you just <laughs> like and subscribe below, <laughs> click the link and um, just give us all of your bank details and the Prince of Nigeria will will see to that. Yes, yeah, yeah. Funny you should mention that, though, because there's this something that, that we were talking about this week and we were talking about, I know you said the Prince of Nigeria, and I know that too. <laughs> But, you know, that surely, you know, Rob, Rob and Ryan have got oodles of cash. Yeah, they have lots of cash. But if you look at something like Man City, maybe not the best example to give, but they've got like Sheikh Mansour, who has oh, yeah. uh, who has limitless, endless pockets of cash. I think, you know, uh, we were talking about how we would feel if we got to the championship and Rob and Ryan weren't enough for us anymore because you know just because ryan might have 500 million that i don't know what he has i don't know what he's worth but a lot i'm guessing but a lot (laughs) you know how are we gonna feel when it gets to the point when maybe that isn't enough i mean you look at luton and you go actually you don't maybe you don't need that much money to get all the way to the premier league the question with luton is do you need that much money to stay to in the stay. Premier League? Mm, that is the big said. question. And at what point are Ryan and Rob not going to... I don't think Ryan and Rob are ever going away. That's not what I'm saying. But I think that there might come a point when they're not enough. And we might they might have to share ownership of that club with... Will Farrell. Farrell. They, Farrell. See, my, my brain... My brain kind of goes into overdrive when I see like little bits of business news and stuff because it's kind of the way I'm I'm wired to think. But when I saw that they purchased Alpine F1, Alpine, Alpine, <laughs> I still say Alpine, Alpine. Anyway, anyway, I reckon, and just hear me out on this. I reckon that was actually a move done to bringing more money to the conglomerate that owns Rex and football club yep. to propel them forward. The only reason they made that move, I mean, it's so left of field and F1 team, F1 teams do bring in a lot of money. They're bringing a lot of exposure, but they had to have done it for a reason. Cause we all know that they're, they bleed Rex yep. Um it, to me, it just seems like a, the type of move that is done to give them the capital moving forward up the leagues to give them the best, the best um, shot at it. So, do you remember? Do you remember when? Um, I think you... I think you're onto something because Ryan. I don't know if you guys heard like and this. Look, I don't want to make it about the the owners this entire time, but I definitely mm-hmm. mentioned that 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 Ryan was going towards. Um, he was putting a bid for the Ottawa Senators, which is like yes. that NHL team. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. You know, he's from Canada. That that kind of makes sense. Other than that, though, he's openly admitted. Sp- other than playing sports, supporting it wasn't really the end goal. And I didn't think with the auto with Wrexham, it was different. He thought of it as a business idea and then it became a love, right? And I'm yeah. sure it would have been the same with Ottawa, but I feel with Alpine, it's not going to have that sentiment. It's not going to be like, oh, Pierre Gasly, I, I love you. Like, it's not going to be like that. It will be a sound investment. I think Michael B. Jordan's invested in it as well. Um and I just think it's to test out and see not only what cash comes in from this, but also what other owners can foot the cash. So if like a Michael B. Jordan, why are we seeing Paul Rudd come to Wrexham on certain days? Why are we seeing Will Ferrell? Yes, it's it's a novelty. It's that, oh, oh my God, I'm going to get to go to Wrexham. But at the same time, maybe, maybe we're seeing like what you said, maybe they're realizing if we go in the trajectory we're going right now, we might not be enough in three years time. So maybe we need our friends to help us. And maybe we need to expand that group of friends to be, you know, deeper pockets. (laughs) Yeah. And, And I suppose F1 is the perfect place to go fishing for people with lots of money. And, oh, yeah. you know, because how much money are they going to make from Alpine? I, I don't know. Yes, F1 teams generate a lot of money. And even the lower end ones like Alpine generate a lot of money. The problem with F1 teams is they also take a shitload of money to run because, mm-hmm. you know, not just paying drivers, but the, the cars and the development and the pit crew and all of the staff that, that's involved around it and, you know, just shipping all them people and kit around the world on a regular 
you know, one or two week basis, you know, that the money required to run a team like that is huge. Although the sponsorship within F1 is massive and you do make huge. a lot of money from that. Um, I, I don't, I sort of sound like I'm, I know what I'm talking about. I really don't when it comes to F1. I don't know how much money, you know, F1 teams make, you know, in my head, it's a lot. But yeah. then when you think of all the money that goes into running these teams, you know, it's probably, you know, I don't know what your margins are, but I do buy into the whole, you know, let's go fishing in a bigger pond to see who has got money and who has got this amount of money just to not throw away, but to just go, oh, this is fun. Let's put a hundred million into this. Do you know what I mean? It's a good yeah. opportunity to sort of see, who has that sort of money uh, to, to be able to maybe invest in another little project in the future. I love that. <laughs> oh, I love that. And I like that. It seems like we're all on board with that too, because I saw a, a few people, uh, uh, mainly journos, oh, uh, Rob and Ryan are making a huge mistake. Um, you know, they get, and it's like, come on, guys, like, stop click yeah. clickbaiting, like, just fuck yeah. off, basically. <laughs> um, so yeah. we, yeah, but yeah, no, look, I'm, I'm glad we're all on that same page. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just get, does get you thinking, though. I mean, I, I, I'm purely in the camp that they really are doing it for the betterment of, of the club to try and bring more other revenue avenues into the club funnel it, funnel it back through so we'll see where that we'll see where that one goes it's an interesting one goes. um you know and uh, they have only bought shares in the team so they have they're not really gonna yeah, have much to do with them running yeah so you know they're not gonna it's not like they're gonna be hit up for more cash because they they said no this is what we're bidding um you know we're buying shares in the team see how it goes and yeah, you know, I'm hoping it's been done for the benefit of Wrexham, and I'd like to yeah. take a bet that it definitely has. Please, yeah. <laughs> because I, th I think it gives an indication. I think they bought 24. Was it? Was it 24? Yeah. I think they bought, yeah. and it was like 170 million dollars, something like that. It's crazy, yeah, it's crazy money. Which, which that that would put the value at, at of the team at 680 million for a team like Alpine, who let's be completely honest, don't win anything, you know, and that is just, it's a small F1 team who don't really win uh, anything at all, don't pick up massive amount of points. So it, it dreads to think what, you know, some of the bigger teams are, are worth, you know. You, 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 yeah. Remember though, Wrexham didn't either. What? You pick up points and win anything. No, no, and look at yeah, us now. I get that. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, look at us now, look eh? Look at us now. Look at us now, hey? The, the magic of Rob and Ryan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what? I feel sorry for sprinkle. Rob. I saw a tweet from him the other day, they, um, and it's he was he retweeted a tweet. Basically, it said Ryan Reynolds plus celebrities have uh yeah. have oh, invested. I, I fucking and he was like, hate that. Hater. He was like, "Oh, you said I'm used to it, but like, you know, what about Michael B. Jordan? He's like, you know, he's not used to it." People oh yeah, I feel really sorry for these people living in their Bel Air mansion <laughs> because they don't get a mention on some crappy <laughs> website. Yeah, of course, how he gets. I mean. I I didn't know who Rob was. I'll be honest. I didn't know who That's he was. That's why he doesn't get mentioned. <laughs> and I, I just feel like I always, I always say Rob and Ryan. I never say Ryan and Rob. Obviously, yeah. I know who Ryan is. Yeah. Yeah. Just feel sorry for Ryan, uh, for Rob because it's yeah. Like, I mean, you know, it's, it was his idea, right? Like he's the... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he just he just kind of you know I, I'm I suppose when he decided to partner with. Uh, with what's it with Ryan Reynolds? It was like, um, yeah, I'm going to be taking a like a back seat in regards but, to the popularity. Uh, here. Technically, if we're talking about whose idea it was, technically it was Humphrey Kerr's. Idea. Yeah, bloody Humphrey, mm. mate. Oh, I love that, that man. Do you know what I mean? And he's <laughs> got, it, he's just like, you know, oh yeah, get out of the way. But I, I think people don't give Humphrey enough credit for what oh. he actually did in making this happen and mm. not only because he was the he was the catalyst in this he was the one who started this whole ball rolling yep. you know right at the very start without Humphrey this wouldn't have happened no, at all and also on on the back of that you know people do forget that Humphrey came here for a whole year to help away from his wife well yeah mm. exactly he did it, the sacrifice Humphrey made for, for this club, I think, is 
forgotten sometimes. Well, he's uh, Ryan's man crush at the moment. Ah. Or just... <laughs> Look, I'll be honest, I'm kind of on that bandwagon. He's he's a tall bloke and my wife's pretty short, so maybe I just need a tall man in my life. So. <laughs> uh, if yeah. I was if I was to cuddle any bloke, it'll probably be Rob. Yeah. <laughs> I love Rob. Like, I, 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 something about him. I mean, I, I, I get it. He's, he's ah, just when I saw him crying at the end of, um, yeah, the, the Boromwood game that just really got to me, broke me yeah. a little bit, and yeah, I was just he, you can tell he wears his heart on his sleeve, and yeah, it's almost, it's almost as though, and I do get the impression that Ryan is very much trying to push Rob into the spotlight and saying, hey, hey, listen, like with that big. Uh, video he did for for his birthday and you yeah. know teaching everyone how to say his name I, I kind of feel that that's what you know ryan's what trying to do, do right him. yeah because they're they're best of mates they're brothers yeah you know they're well they're not real brothers but you know brothers might as well be at this point thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so but, I, I kind yeah. of i kind of think that you know rob in my opinion has more connect that like it's really in him, like he yeah, he is he's Rex until he dies and he'll be. And he stayed awake Rex for his birthday, until... didn't he? Yeah, like he it was did. his birthday and he stayed on his own with away from his wife and kids, <laughs> and yeah. he just stayed in like Chester somewhere, and yeah. like just was wandering around in his Rexham kit, just loving life, like so <laughs> it's just like that's the kind of bloke. But um, I did want to just put I did want to put a mention um to. Like the fact that we're talking about racing, and now I'm just thinking of the race course in my head. <laughs> and now I'm like, all right, I, I just have to go to my like that question. Can you tell us, plebs who've never been, um, what it's like to be at the race course? Because I mean, it's not just history, but it's it's the match day event. What do you eat at the day? What are you what are you doing? What's tell us like run through kind of a day at the race course? How much does a beer cost? Yeah, that's probably um, the most important question to be. To yeah, be it's frank. definitely the most important question. Yeah, you you've you've led with the most important question there. So I, I don't think you can drink it, can you? In the in the race course, you can't drink. You're not allowed beer? to eat it when you're out. Uh, eat it, drink it on when you're in the stand. No, no. So ah, right, we right. get there. So kickoffs at three. We get there at one thirty. Yeah. The reason for that is that I can have beers before we go and sit down. That is the the one and only reason that we get there that so, early. Yeah, well, Ryan's my new favourite person. Yeah, it's like the boys train. Yes, warm up. Yeah, so I, we go, we go in. I, there's a few beers on 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 offer, but I drink Madri. So Madri's the nicest out of the beers that we've got uh, at, at the race course. Four forty a pint. I don't know what that translates into uh, into Australian, Australian dollars. Pretty shit at the moment, so that's probably one mil. So yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. we will find it. <laughs> It's yeah. about it's about nine dollars, oh, about nine dollars fifty, yeah. sixty around there. Yeah, so it's oh. not, it's not, yeah, yeah. So it's for for there is cheaper beer, beer is available, and I'll probably get slated a little bit for saying I don't drink Wrexham Lager, but but I don't. But Wrexham Lager is cheaper. Uh, I know. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, do drink, I do drink <laughs> Wrexham Lager. Uh, quite regularly. I just don't drink it on match days. I drink Madre on match days. Is it superstition? Stuff. Like, what I about just, you, Sean? Hey, uh, <laughs> no, it, uh, I, it probably has developed. I'm not a superstitious person at all, but it maybe has developed into that now because I, I started drinking it because it first came out because they were like a, a they were announced as like a partner or something like that. And I had I had a pint and I was like, this is really nice. So for a few weeks I drank it and it probably has sort of developed into a little bit of a superstition now. Um but Sean Sean doesn't drink. So um so cheap date. Uh, it's great. Uh, <laughs> I have a couple of beers uh and then Sean and our son have food um and then we, uh, we go out uh, for the race course itself. Um I don't think there's anywhere quite like it. No. For the size that it is. I mean, I've been to games at other grounds. I've been to a game at Anfield, for example. Um, uh, you know, I've I've been to I've been to big grounds where there's 40, 50,000 people. Um, but there's nothing quite like a sold out 10,000 seater stadium in Wrexham. You can you know, there are plenty of grounds out there who get more people there. But it is, it's something different. 
And it, it, that's probably, it's probably not something different. It's probably just because we're so tied to the club and the passion that we have that makes it feel different. But it, it just, this this is not like anything else. No. And there are times when I have, oh, I've completely lost myself. Not at, not just at the race course, at other places. I mean, when the Oldham game is won, so we played Oldham away and we were 1-0 down and we were absolutely shit for 85 minutes. And I was like, I've come all this way. Well, it's not all this way, but uh, <laughs> it's like an hour away. And it was crap. And it was it was ridiculous. And then we equalised after 85 and then uh, Mullin scored in the 96th minute. Um, I climbed up on a chair and I fell. And then I was I nearly had, uh, hurt a six-year-old child that was in front of me because I fell full down like that. And I was just cr- crazy. But like the times at the race course, I, that is my sort of, that's me in a nutshell, yeah. really, at games. When Ben Foster made that penalty save. Uh, oh, again, what was that like? Against that was, I, I think that was one of my best footballing moments. I would say I, that that whole game was amazing. Um, it, it was. Uh, but the the penalty save, I I don't think I've felt anything like that watching a game before. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you've never felt like that about uh, anything. No, 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 no. <laughs> I have to throw that in. I have to throw that in. You're having a child. I, I think that it was the Coventry game as a whole, the FA Cup one, that was special. Yeah. Because me, just me and Sean went to that one. Our son didn't come, my dad, and Sean's brother. It was just us two. And we went and we were right behind the goal. And it was behind the goal where all the goals were scored as well. And we didn't expect anything from that game. It was an, it was going to be a nice day out to a ground I'd never been to before. And it, that was special. Yeah. That was, yeah. and to, to go and to score them, got, that was that was a special day. But to flip back to the Notts County game, that was definitely up there, thereabouts with the Coventry game. But that penalty save uh, and the, the emotion everywhere in that ground when that was saved, I, I would say it is right up there as one of my best footballing moments ever in my 40 years that is that is right up there i was climbing barriers i didn't know where i was going you know when the emotion just takes you yeah and there's, I get there's you. like a barrier behind us isn't there and i just started climbing it and then i was like i was like reaching out to to people behind me and i was like what am i doing just get down where am i going you know when you start doing something you go i don't know where this ends i don't know where i'm going so the people sitting next to us yeah it was it, yeah. It, it's a special when special things happen good? it is a special place like yeah. the dover game you know the six five dover game it, it, it again i was you know I was that was a huge i didn't even know uh it's a special place when special things happen although i have been there over the years it can be a hostile place when things aren't going right as well, you know, because there's a lot of passion in them stands. Yeah. And, you know, I've been there when teams, Rex and teams have been booed off at half time, booed off at full time. Uh, just people absolutely, you know, disgusted with performances and shouting at players, you know, that they, 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 we've had the ugly side of Wrexham over the years, but, we forget about that now because everything's going well. So I, I must say, you guys have, um, and and to our listeners, head over to me, the wife, and Rex and AFC on Twitter and follow these guys because hopefully you'll see you guys have hands down one of the best social media moments I think I've ever seen, and it was when when we won the football league officially with Boreham Wood, and it was the pitch invasion, and I yeah. th- you released a video. <laughs> and the best thing ever was Ryan on his video turning around to Sean. <laughs> it's like you really got that sense. Like Ryan's like, "Is it okay that I go?" And Ryan, and Sean's like, "Go and get on the picture." Go. <laughs> no, that was the best Sean thing had, ever. <laughs> Sean had spent all day telling me whatever happens today, <laughs> do so not. Easy. 
run on that pitch. Whatever happens, you are not going on that pitch. Because, <laughs> it, it, you know, in UK football, it's probably the same around the world. You know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a criminal offence to enter the field of play. It is, and you'll get arrested and you'll get, you know, you'll get a criminal record for doing it. Um, so Shan had spent, oh, not just the, the day of the game. She'd spent days prior going, <laughs> you are not going on that pitch. Whatever happens, you are not going on that pitch. And then I filmed, I was filming the video at final at the final whistle. And then all you can hear in the background, you know, bearing in mind, Shan has spent days, hours telling me not to run <laughs> on the pitch. And in the background, you just hear Sean going, get on that pitch. Like, go, that's go. go. I'm going, yeah, go, go. And it was just like. But... It was one of the best moments ever. I just loved it. I wait, I've got a bad hip, right? And I'm waiting for a, um, a hip operation. Oh, shit. And I was like, I, I was jumping and running and I was in so much pain the next day. But I oh, just kind of, me. I was just so like engrossed in the moment and like all these fans are on the pitch. Completely forgot that I was uh, yeah. like I can't walk properly. Um, but yeah, it was just it was the oh it was just an amazing moment. I've just I was so happy that we were there to kind of witness it and be a part of it. It was just and like Alfie kept saying to us, our little lad, he was like, "Have I just committed a crime, mummy?" <laughs> <laughs> In a roundabout kind of way, yeah, we yeah, are. yeah. It's like ten thousand fans on the pitch, so I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm good luck sure policing that. that. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. Fleur put the uh, put the fine in the f- fine in the mail. Um, so yeah, it's it's, get, it's coming. Yeah, but... yeah. I'm not paying it. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. To be fair though, the stewards and the police that were obviously you know policing the the end of the game, they they I think they were very sensible and were like, you, you know what, let's just step aside and just let them you know let them do what they want to do. And it was funny watching good the stuff. ref running off. Like before oh he my was, god! He was trying to get off the pitch. Yeah, it was the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. It was oh, like the funniest. Like I didn't yeah. even notice. Like I watched it and I had my own moment of kind of what you mentioned, Ryan, where it was like I just kind of I accidentally um tripped over while I was celebrating, and I disconnected my TV. So I pulled my phone out and I was recording me and my dog just on the floor and I was just like laughing and crying at the same time and I just thought it was hilarious. Anyway, that's not the point. The point was I didn't really get to see that happen, but Chris mentioned it in the uh, the Mark Griffiths podcast we did a couple of weeks ago. It's like, oh, you know, he really legged it. And I was like, did he? Oh, I'll just watch it back. And I I pissed myself for like a week because it's just, yeah. I don't think Usain Bolt can run that fast. It was the fastest I've seen anyone leg it Player yeah. doesn't matter. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah it he, was funny. He engineered the moment that he blew the whistle to make sure he was close to the tunnel as well. <laughs> the ball went out to that far side where the tunnel was, and the ref <laughs> went, "This is my moment." It didn't matter if it was full time or not. He 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 made sure he moved himself close to that tunnel, and he went, "This is it." And he blew the whistle, and he was gone. He was absolutely because I've not been involved in this at all. But it was. It was. It was amazing. It was. Did you, really did you get up close with one of the players and have a sneaky pinch? No. Sneaky pinch. No. 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 <laughs> we have got a story that when we went to we went to watch the Kings of Leon recently, and oh, uh, Ryan good. had a few drinks. Um, he's a bit of a lightweight these days. Oh. So we were um, obviously the, uh, there was a few players there. I think Paul Mullen, um, jo- Jordan Davis, yeah, Elliot Lee. Elliot Lee. They were there. Um, and they were kind of where we were standing. They were getting ushered to like a private bit that they could watch the you know the concert a bit closer. Um, and then when they were ushering them back, Ryan had had a few more beers, um, <laughs> so he was uh, a little bit more drunk. Um, and he was like, it was like a five year old girl. Honestly, he was like, oh, it's Paul Mullen. Oh, you kind of touched Paul, and then Paul. I think Paul just looked at him like, get off me. Um, and then. <laughs> Lee did the same thing. He was like, oh, Lee, 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 Lee. <laughs> I, None of this, none of this crap is true. It is uh, true. It is not. It so is true. The, the bit, I mean, most of it is true. But All of it is true. <laughs> most voice, of it. That voice. Oh, that voice happened. No, it didn't. Oh, it did. I literally, I, I just wanted to, and then it sounds, this sounds weird and creepy, but I just wanted to touch them. 
And, yeah. and I thought, <laughs> it's just, I don't know. I just, and it just sounds so wrong saying that, but I could see them coming. And I, I remember my brain just, it was like my touch brain them, was, them, yeah, them, my brain them. was just going, touch them, touch them. Touch touch them. them. Touch I just went, I reached out and I took, I, I hit Paul on the back and I went, I think I just looked at him and I went, that'll do that'll do he loves I, that I, I, he loves it yeah, I think I, I sort of touched Elliot Lee on the arm and I, I, I sort of turned away and went yeah that was successful yeah I think that was, <laughs> you know, dickhead itself no right? that was perfect <laughs> yeah happy <laughs> yeah. Could, can I can I ask you guys and this this is something that's like like I just love hearing these stories it's because both of you what is it like, Sean? And I'll get both of you to say you want to speak on it. But Sean, what is it like to share these moments with your husband? Not just about you know the funny stories, but also the good moments, the bad moments. What's that kind of like? Because I'm I'm literally just forcing Wrexham on my wife like a like a bad smell, and I'm like, you know, hey, look, it's it's Paul Mullen. Oh, don't you think Ollie Palmer looks attractive? Like, you know, maybe watch him and watch this game. She's just not interested in football at all. But because you've got this passion and you love football and you and you obviously love each other very much, um, you know, you get to share these moments together and with your with your son and like, I mean, what is that like for you guys? Like, what's that like when you tell people about it? For me, it's. I, well, I'd like to say that every time we have like a, an amazing moment, I'm the one he goes to first for a cuddle. Um, but I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> oh, he, you're not. He goes to strange. No, he turns to strange people, strange men <laughs> that he's never met before, and hugs them first, and then goes, "Oh, actually, I better hug Sham." Um, but no, <laughs> he's, um, it is. It is. It's such a look because, like Ryan said, we've never really had um, like interests in common. Um, which is like I said, what I you know, I don't know how we've stayed together so long, but anyway, um, yeah, I just think being able to share that kind of moment with Ryan and Alfie when he's bothered, um, is I don't know, it's it's kind of indescribable, really. It's like it's like when they score a goal, it's like the birth of your child. <laughs> That's wow. that's good. Depends on the level of goal. Well, I think. No, they <laughs> score. It, it's you know. Well, yeah. Okay, maybe I'm a bit exaggerating. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. But I, it, it is like such a special moment. And then, well, I mean, having... let's let's be fair. It's not as painful as giving birth to a child. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> I quite enjoy giving birth, so you know it looks easy. I think giving well, birth. But, oh, yeah. careful! <laughs> joke, joke, joke. Way to uh, yeah, make yourself unpopular. That I, I think, it, it, like Sean <laughs> said, we were we always had we always had really different interests, and that was all right, you know, because at the core of at, like a really oh, it's getting deep now. At the core <laughs> of relationships, you know, you get on. And you can be best friends in a relationship without really having the same interest. That's that's OK. That happens. You know, I've had friends growing up that, you know, we didn't really like the same things. Always, you know, supported different football clubs or like different types of music. But you're still friends. You know what I mean? It's And that was always it. That was OK. But at the same time, when you do get an interest that you are both really into, you realise that that's better than not having interests in common, you know, because like I say, it is OK not to have the same interest. It, it used to because we used to talk about things, especially music, because Sean's taste in music is crap. And it is, though, in it. And then I sort of forced, <laughs> I forced my music onto her. And then she sort of quite likes certain bands that I like now, you know, like she likes Oasis and she likes Oasis. Yeah. And like, who doesn't love Oasis? Yeah. And then the, the Smiths <laughs> and, you know, stuff like that. And she's, she's, and the, the Stone Roses and all that. And I've sort of forced that on her and she likes it. And, um, but, you know, it, but you can have the, like conversations and debates about uh, why that music's better than that music. And, you know, so that's what the thing that keeps you together, isn't it? But then to have an interest. Like Shan comes to me now and she goes, Oh, have a look at this. She shows me like goals. <laughs> like, and I'm like, yes. What's happened to you? What has happened uh, to you? This would never have happened. She goes, Oh, look at this interview with such and such. And I'm like, going, and, and like, 
Well, did you see that tweet that Paul Mullen put out? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened? What's but happened? I, I got to say, I got to say, Ryan, I think you you make just about every single, I know every single Aussie bloke jealous because they would love to be able to share their passion for football with their missus, you know? So, oh, yeah. trust yeah. me, I, like I can tell you right now, my like my wife doesn't understand the extent of what we go through for, you know, podcasts, Wrexham. She's just like, oh, yeah, that's that's nice. Like, you know, that's really nice. So <laughs> you are very lucky to have, you know, someone to share it with. In saying that, look, if my wife's listening, she's not. But if she was, um, <laughs> then it obviously um, she has like, yeah, she does what I think is is still very sweet, which is, you know what? The main thing is you're happy. And if you're happy, then I'm happy. And I, I like that. But oh. at the same time, God, it's nice to hear, like, you know, you guys share those moments. And I'm I'm just ama- amazed. You know, it's obviously taken a while. Like, you guys have been together 13 years, you mentioned? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. 13. And what, it came to year 10 or 11 that, you, you know, you yeah. guys are now on board with something that's, so, like, that's, I don't know about anyone else, but that that gets me choked up because it's like it's it because you guys are willing to you know obviously be an amazing couple and take care of your beautiful child, but at the same time share passions and share something that's actually quite incredible. And now it envelops your whole life, right? Like this is your life. Like that's crazy. <laughs> Completely. Yeah. I mean, we, we, you know, we do a podcast once a week, you know, but and and it's only an hour, but it literally because we both work full time, so it takes us. Um, that to structure it, to get content for it, um, to come up with a quiz that we do every week, everything. It literally takes a week to do that. So, you know, it starts, we fil- usually film on a Sunday, usually. Mm, yeah. I mean, it depends. But definitely when the season's on, uh, we film on a Sunday. We'll go to the game on Saturday, film on the Sunday. But then as soon as that podcast's finished, Monday morning, so clean slate and then we're planning then the, for the next podcast for that full week you know I, you might be doing it on a break in work where you'll do 10 minutes of planning something so it, it does literally take over your life and then in between all of that there's stuff that's coming out of Wrexham that you're trying to enjoy and not just absorb as this is it's content awesome. but our yeah, podcast yeah you know good I mean? call yeah. To yeah enjoy it as a fan as well as just trying to take it on board to, to use yeah. as well. Yeah. But yeah, it has, but it's taken, it's taken us our lives over it in a way that I didn't really expect. You know, when Sean got really into Rex and got really passionate about it, what I never really expected was she's still not going to be interested in other football outside of, of Wrexham. But then when the season came to an end, um, she would like text me in work and going, uh, the uh, the League One playoffs kick off at this time tonight. Are we watching this? And I'm like, yeah, 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 that's fine. I mean, I why not? Um, and then we watched the Scottish, Scottish Premiership uh, uh, playoffs as well. And I was like, I think that was the point when we were clinging on to the last bit of football of the season. But like she, she, all the time, Shan just wants to watch football because. I think she's, you know, even though she's been going to games, going to games it isn't always the easiest way to learn no. about the game. No. You know, I think the easiest way for new fans to learn about the game is probably watching it on TV and listening to the pundits and watching replays and seeing how people, okay, he's offside. How is he offside? Oh, well, they've drawn a line on the pitch. So there you go. That's how he's offside. And, you know, all that stuff that you're trying to absorb as new to football is easier, in my opinion, on TV than it is in real life. But so I think that's why Sean is trying to absorb as much football as possible, which I'll be honest, is quite possibly the best scenario I could have hoped for. (laughs) Can we watch more football? Hell yeah, we can watch more football. Of we course can you football. can. Yeah, as much football as you want to watch, let's get it on. You know That's I mean? right. So, well, I think um, speaking of learning things. Oh, uh, here we go. So you know every I'm every learning. podcast. And and just to our listeners as well, uh, we were just over on the Me, The Wife and Rex and AFC podcast as well. So head over there and watch watch our episode with them. But. You do you guys at the end of every episode do this really cool segment where you challenge your your guests, you give them a bit of a, a questionnaire, a bit of a quiz. Yeah. And uh so we're gonna do the same with you. 
So this this though is going to be Ryan versus Shard. So me and Adrian, oh. we're, we're out of this. We're going to ask the now, question, I, and you'll understand why we're out of this in a moment. <laughs> so the, the 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 quiz is is we've got a bunch of Australian slang sayings Brilliant. that we're going to we're going to say, and it's up to you to tell us the meaning. <laughs> So you okay. can you can either work together or you can you can go one after the other. We've oh no no had... completely completely head to head yeah okay right. head, head, head to head. head all right so let's do this right so so <laughs> Aussie slang here we go teaching a bunch of Welshies Aussie slang <laughs> uh, okay so the first one I'm going to the Mac. Going to Macca's with a Sheila to get a Sanger. Right. I know. I'm going to McDonald's with a girl to get a burger. And Ryan? Can I can I hear it one more time? Is that, is that okay? Going to Macca's with the Sheila to get a Sanger. Sanger. So I'm going to go see Macca's for uh, Macca, Macca's for us. It does sound like McDonald's. But I'm going to, I'm going to Sanger. Sanger. I'm gonna I'm gonna go different to Sean. I'm gonna go I'm going to the pub with a girl to get a beer. Oh okay. Well Sean got that one. One point to Sean. Oh. <laughs> but but Sanger is like more like a sandwich, but the right. young they okay. think of the same thing, but there okay. we go. So so okay. one nil to Sean. Right, number two. Gonna buy a slab from the bottle eye. Wow. I don't know what that means, but that is the best one of the best sentences I've ever heard. I'm gonna buy a slab from what? From the bottle eye. Bobolo. Bottle eye. Oh bottle eye. Slab. Um I'm gonna buy a crate from the shop. Yes. Yeah. Slab. Slab from the I've heard this. I've heard the second part of that. I've heard before. I'm, I now this. I feel when I answer this, it's sort of giving away something about my personality, and it's really not. But I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to make it beer related again, <laughs> right? And I'm going to go beer from the. I want to. I want to say pub, but I want. <laughs> I'm just saying beer and pub for every answer. I'm going to say buy a beer. From, well, I like an like a. Uh, a from... Oh, can I change mine before you finish? Go on, you change yours, and then I'll answer mine. I'm gonna buy a crate from an off license. That's what I was about to say. Oh, you didn't, did you? So, so like, I was gonna say, a, a, yeah, I was gonna say a beer from an off license or like a shop. <laughs> okay, so a bottle eye is a bottle shop. Yeah. But they're not off licensed here. They have to be licensed. So, <laughs> and a slab, all right, is when you buy a full box of beer. Yeah. Like, yeah. We call it a slab. I'm going to gonna grab a slab of tinnies. Yeah. Um, you know. Oh, see, I think I won that. <laughs> yeah. You can have that one. I don't I mind. I, I think I, I got that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Ish. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I think we should give that to both of them. What do you think, Adrian? Yeah. I think that uh, would definitely be fair. Yeah, I think that <laughs> Adrian, you're on mute, mate. <laughs> I've just been talking to myself just an inner monologue about just life in general. Um no, but I've been <laughs> Oh. I love that so much because I muted myself because I coughed, forgot, and then just did that. Anyway, classic, classic uh yeah, this is why I'm not allowed on outside the house. Anyways, I can't edit um, that out, mate. Can't edit it out <laughs> unless you just put in Adrian tried to speak, but he's a total tool, so he never really understands how a mute <laughs> button works. Fuck me dead. Anyways, <laughs> next one. <laughs> I think you both deserve uh, one point for that. I love that okay. when Chris said that, I had said that. So I just thought he was responding to me. So, yeah. anyways, continue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, number three. All right, okay. so at the moment we've got Sean two, Ryan one. Number three, mm -hmm. there is nothing like a snag and a stubby. Right. Well, I know a stubby is a beer. Yeah. 
So there's nothing like a steak and a beer. A snag or a stag? Snag or stag? Snag. Uh, snag. I'm still going to go with that. So you're going with steak and a beer? Steak and a beer, yeah. Ah. Oh. See, I, your answers are really good. I know. I know a, I know a stubby as well. I know, yeah. Yeah. Phone away. Yeah, phone away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Snag. Uh, okay. 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 Um, oh, see, I really like yours. Take it then. <laughs> uh, Snag. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to go with the same. Because I know the second part's right. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm a, I, that's what I would have guessed. So I will go with the same as Sean. So a snag in Australian slang is a sausage. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> And I'd, I'd love to put a fun fact out for you as well, just for just to show our more of our Australianisms and Australian listeners will will know this. Um, during election time, um, when there's elections for state elections, national elections, whatever it might be, we will literally have a, people call it a democracy sausage because you're going to get a snag because what you do is you go vote because you're like I got to vote, but at least when I'm done, I'll get a snag on the way out, and you put your two dollar coin in, and then you. You get your snag on the way out and it rewards people to do it. And honestly, I feel like that's why 90% of the country goes and votes. So um, I just yeah, thought I'd let you know. Yeah, this country. Yeah, we definitely. Yeah. Don't for voting. No, we don't. Literally nothing. No. <laughs> I, I, I would definitely vote more regularly if I got a sausage on the way out. Yeah, I'd love to have a sausage on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Well right, played. So we're still, well played. We're still 2-1. Uh, yeah, Sean's, Sean's leading. Yeah. All right, so we've got here two we more. So they're going to get a little bit harder here, all right? Okay. Uh, yeah, these ones are. They're going to get difficult. harder. I've only got one of them so far. <laughs> all, yeah. all right, so this one is have a gander at that banana bender having a chunder. Okay. So a gander is have a watch. So have a watch of that banana bender. Oh, I don't know what a banana bender is. But I know what a chunder is. That's like sick, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, watch that. Watch that idiot having a chunder. I don't know what a banana bender is. No, no, me. Something yellow. A bendy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to... Yeah, so... Okay, I'm gonna have a gander. What was it? A ga gander. I'm sorry. I my memory's awful. You literally said it 15 <laughs> seconds ago, and I forgot it already. So have a gander at the banana bender having a chunder. See, chunder to us is being sick, but is that uh, right? I'm gonna have a gander. Have a gander. I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna look at. Um, a bender. A if it makes bender. you feel any better, I didn't know this one. And um, okay, okay. So if better. it makes you feel a little bit better, I had to. I had to ask the Australianism expert from the Englishman. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to check his Aussie license and making sure he was a legit Australian. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. I, I just. I think my Aussie card's been revoked at this point. <laughs> okay, I. I'm gonna. Have a look <laughs> at the drunk at the drunk man being sick. Oh, oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. So you're both onto it there. Right. But a banana bender is what we call Queenslanders. Oh where the bananas okay. grow in this country, and it's probably a very regional dialect that I just wasn't aware of being a, a Melbourneian <laughs> and now in Adelaide. So uh, I yeah. feel like it's something I should have known, but uh, well oh, done right, on getting right. the rest of it because yeah. that was really hard. <laughs> Brian, yeah. this is your last chance to redeem yourself, yeah. Nick. Okay. You can okay. tie things up here. All right. Here we go. So the last one. Quick, mate. Chuck a Yui, we just passed the servo and I want to buy some durries. I, I'm going to go first because... Well, I've got it in my head as well. Yeah. So, quick, mate. Turn the car around. I want to go to the service station to buy some... 
<laughs> to be fair, but, Australians do have a lot of words for beer. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what was the last word again, Chris? Durries. 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 So, Durries is going to be, if that's going to be brand related, I think. So, it's going to be like there's going to be cigarettes called Durrells, or there's going to be beer called. Durants or Durants Durries. Quick, turn the car around. I want to go to the service station to buy some cigarettes. I can change the last word and say beer. <laughs> Ryan, you just tied it up, mate. You just yes. tied it up. Well done. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. Congrats. Well done. Oh, well done, guys. You knew a lot more than I we thought. We have a tiebreaker one, do we? No, I no, mean, that... I've got a list of Australianisms I was Googling, and I'll be honest, I don't know half of them. So, <laughs> <laughs> no. It makes us feel better. No, we're, good. Yeah. We're, we're all right. I, I'm, I'm so competitive, even though this is so lighthearted. If I'd have lost, <laughs> it would have ruined the next hour of my life. I'll be honest. Okay, well, was, well, Ryan... I that. Why didn't I win that? Ryan and Sian, we are proud to present you with sweet fuck all. Sweet fuck all is our prize that we give. And we we will give guests that to... with gratitude. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. So, oh. just quickly before we wrap it up here, do you want to give your socials a quick plug for for everyone out there? Yeah. So, um, as we say, me, the wife, and Wrexham AFC, um, we are on YouTube. If you just simply search me, the wife, and Wrexham AFC on YouTube. Subscribe, uh, subscribe, subscribe. Please subscribe. We're, we're getting, we're ticking ever closer to the thousand subscriber mark when we can actually start making a little bit of money from the huge conglomerates that is YouTube. That would be amazing. Um, yeah, if you just search us up on any social media platform, we're on uh, Facebook, we're on uh, YouTube, we're on Twitter, we're on TikTok, we're on everything. Everything you can imagine, we're out there. Just search the full name and you will find us. Um, all our all of our handles are slightly different for each uh, social media platform. So yeah, just search just us up. Logo. Search us up. And if you don't mind, I would like to ask. Um, we are currently up for the uh, what are we up for? An award. <laughs> For you some... can they people can vote for us for the British Podcast Awards. Yes, no the way, way. that's amazing. British nice. Podcast Awards for um for the Listener's Choice uh, nice. uh award. So um if anybody would like to head over to our most recent video on YouTube or anything, we will there'll be a link to be able to vote for us, and we'll be very appreciative to anybody who would like to vote for us for that. I don't know where the the awards are, but I think they're in person. I think you have to wear a tuxedo and everything. Oh, very nice. nice. It's on Thursday as well. It's on a Thursday. That's on fine. a Thursday, lovely. Yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. It's all right. You just don't just don't tell work and that you know all of a sudden yeah. you're just sick on Friday. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. But That's can fine. you can yeah. the Chaka people Siki. who are international Chaka vote Siki. for it? That's Chaka what we Siki, call there it. you go. Chaka Siki. But um yeah. can can people who are international vote for that? So for example, if yeah. I log on, am I able to vote? I think I, I believe so. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's something that is open to everybody. Um, we have strangely, our, not strangely, I suppose, but our audience is predominantly American. So, which Maybe. is something we never thought would be the case when we started this. But literally fifty percent, Bob on fifty percent of our audience is American uh, and connected. Incredible, no, just American wow. actually. Um, so and I think only 20 something percent of our audience is from the UK, which is is crazy. Um, uh, but um, but yeah, so ev- anyone uh, all around the world can vote for that, and that'd be just yeah, lovely. Just well, well, let this be a call out to our Aussie listeners and our Kiwi yep. friends across the pond as well. Yep, get over to their podcast, click the link in their description, and make sure you vote for these two lovely people. We've had an absolute ball today. Yep. This has been a lot yeah. of fun. And highlight of my week for sure. Yeah, highlight definitely. Can't oh, thank you guys thanks. enough for coming on our show. We appreciate you. We love you. We support you, guys. Thank you very thank much. You.
Thank you, guys. We would we'd love to do some more with you as the season goes on. I think sure. this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship, and I think <laughs> we should we should definitely keep this going. And uh, yeah. we'll we'll have you back on our show uh, definitely a few times during the season uh, if you are willing to to come. Of course, on. For sure. likewise, For sure. you are always welcome here, and. Um, you know, and the professionalism that is, you know, my mic muting will hopefully improve for you for the next bout. Um, but no, honestly, we really appreciate you guys. And again, you guys are heroes to us because you guys basically are the pinnacle of what we're we're trying to do here. So we we, you know, we the fact we get to talk to you, and I like to think we've become friends in this way. So I like, you know, I'm pretty proud of that. So I really appreciate it. Yes, yeah, definitely. thank you so much. Thanks, thank guys. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you. Well, Adrian, mate, that was a really good interview. I love those guys. They are amazing. I like, yeah, I, I'm just happy. I'm just so beaming right now. Um, I feel like we've made new friends and I don't know if that shows how needy I am, but um, I just love, I love uh, making new friends and I feel like that's what we've just achieved, not just from a podcast perspective. Um, they're incredible heroes in that regard because, you know, that's why we started, but to have them, you know, express similar sentiment to us it, it 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 means the world so again thank you guys for coming on and um please do check them out uh me my wife and Wrexham afc absolutely absolutely on all your socials so now look we're going to finish this off this is a good special episode and we're going to finish this off with a as you know we finish off with a Wrexham artist every single week but this week we are going very live this is going to be yep. very special we're going to have a live performance from a very own Wrexham artist. So let's just get him in here to say a quick hello. As soon as he joins, we're going to say a quick hello to Matthew Carroll. Now, I discovered this guy on Facebook, and this song was amazing. It hits you right, cool. right where you want to hit. And um, he's up and coming. He's just releasing his music to uh, to Spotify which I believe um, is coming out on the 14th of July. Um, Matthew, mate, how are you? Good day. How you doing? You okay? <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. Um, mate, where did it all start for you? How did you get into music? Give us the lowdown. I've been doing it, I suppose, for years. So since I was probably maybe 12, 13, started playing the guitar. Um, I think when I was about... 16 17 18 that's when i started kind of going around the bars in wrexham doing um the open mic nights things like that um just trying to do like bits of my own stuff uh covers um anything anyone would listen to really then i moved to liverpool for 12 years so i was i was there for 12 years and i was i was still just doing the same thing really just kind of going around the bars um the odd open mic night bits and pieces like that but it's only probably in the last sort of three or four years that I've kind of started doing it and pushing it a little bit more and kind of out every weekend. Um, not doing so much of my own stuff at the moment, though. It's more like covers in pubs, all that sort of stuff. But I do want to try and do my own stuff again. So I thought, um, why not write a song about Wrexham? Every, you know, ev everyone's crazy about Wrexham at the moment. Um, I'm doing a lot kind of before games, post-match in Wrexham, things like that. So I thought, you know, Declan Swans did it. I'll give it a go. Um, see, see how That's we it. get on with it. So that that was kind of <laughs> my know. inspiration for, for doing this song anyway, is, you know, everyone loves that Declan Swans song. And mm. I'm never going to write a song as good as that. But if I can do something that people are going to listen to and enjoy, then, um, you know, that's... That's what I want to do. So, so have you been uh, you been a Wrexham supporter for life? All my life. Um, I think I probably started going. So I started going with my dad probably when I was maybe four, five, something like that. Um, and it's, yeah, just, just all my life going. So that's why, like, I know you guys think this is all crazy with Wrexham at the moment, but for, for everyone that's been going all their life, th this is just still unbelievable. You're kind of pinching yourself every day thinking you know it can't be real but it obviously it is you know it's it's incredible <laughs> i love that i love Absolutely. that and i think 
Um, so like obviously you went to Liverpool for 12 years and obviously you did the par the bars and, and the clubs there and then and Wrexham as well. More towards the Wrexham area, but what's been one of your favorite gigs that you've done, I guess, in Wrexham? What's been what's been the standout? Uh after the Notts County game last yep. season. Um I was in the parish in uh in Wrexham and so I do a lot in the parish, so I do a lot for Kev in the parish, um, and the parish gets a mention on this song, actually. Um, oh, cool. But I do quite a lot in the parish, post-match, um, all, all that kind of stuff, and it's where everyone kind of heads after the game. It's it's it's, it's normally brilliant, um, but after the Notts County game, I, I was I was due to play there anyway, um, as it happens, and so I, I was kind of with my little boy um, and my wife, and I think I had to go back to my van to get something, uh, to get me guitar and bits and pieces like that. I had to walk past the parish to you know, go and get me gear and that. And the queue outside the parish, it was crazy. Like, you couldn't get in there. Um, so, like, when I got in there and I started, like, playing, it was just absolutely incredible. So, like, you, you're doing all your Wrexham stuff, the Super Ben Foster, um, do a couple of other Wrexham songs, and it was just absolutely crazy. So I think that is that is probably the best gig, I think, that after the Notts County game, everyone was absolutely buzzing after that game. It was it was incredible. Ah, lovely, lovely. So this song you're performing today, what's it called? It's called Take Me to the Race Course. Take um, Me to the Race Course. Love it. And it's, it's it. basically, I suppose it's just a song about match days at the race course, really, you know, take me to the race course ground. And, uh, you know, that's where so many Wrexham fans just love being. You know, we thing is, we, we I suppose we've all been there. It, it's It's not just been brilliant over the last kind of couple of years it's been up and down over the last sort of what 40 50 60 years i suppose and I, people keep going back you know we keep going back i mean we obviously got relegated out of the football league and you still get that kind of core of hardcore supporters that keep going back there's something that takes you back to watch Wrexham, takes you back to the race course there's some, something about it and it's it's about that really um it's about after the game getting down into town get into the parish just enjoying match day really so lovely lovely so Perfect. you're on spotify you're on any other platforms or you're just trying to get on spotify for now i think it's all of them so when it gets released it'll just be on everything it'll be on apple it'll be on spotify it'll be anything you can download anything from i think so no uh, worries everyone, everyone everyone goes to spotify don't they so no worries <laughs> listeners once it's released link will be in the description um to to his music please Head over there, support him, you know, get his name out. He's an up and comer. He's been doing it for a while as well. And uh, I guarantee you, you are going to love this song. So without further ado, for our first live ever performance, Matthew Carroll, take it away, mate. Thank you. Take me to the course ground if I'm lost that's where I'll be found Saturday come rain or shine take me there I know that I'll be fine when there's a no draw I'm back again behind the goal red army the 12th man Lucky shirt, pants and socks Behind the gold of the Moan Road icebox and When it hits the net and you hear that roar The cop goes wild when we score The cop goes wild when we score Come on you reds, give me some more That's why we all belong 
scrap on the street on the way home the bab on the floor the drunk calls on the phone and then we think back to the hours before the cop goes wild when we score <laughs> that was awesome. That was so good. <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, I understand you got one more for our listeners. Yes. Yeah. Go on, give it to us, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you a funny, quick, quick, funny story before I do this one. Uh, so I was playing in ch- playing near Chester last night, actually. And oh. uh, as I'm walking into the pub, first thing that this lad says to me is like. Don't you be fucking playing them Wrexham songs, will you? And I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a long night. <laughs> that's the best. Oh, my God. Oh, that's lovely. Like, oh. No fucking Super Ben Foster in goal. And I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> it, it's like, fuck. Oh. <laughs> all right. That's so uh, good. <laughs> got a little badge on the top of my guitar, and it's a little Wrexham badge. So I have to take a different guitar when I'm uh, when I'm playing in Chester. So. No way. That's <laughs> is that is that crazy? <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, lovely. All right. Lastly, before right. we leave here, guys, thank you so much for tuning into today's episode, and uh, thank you to me, the wife, and Wrexham AFC. Amazing to have you on, and and Matthew Carroll. Thank you for coming on and. Uh, and doing something with us that's uh, not been done before. So, guys, as uh, Matthew Carroll takes it out, Cheers, guys. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, Take Amazing. Thank Woo! You.